What's up, people? It's Prez. It's draft season, but I'm not here to talk about draft stuff. I'm here to talk about some RJ Barrett things I saw in game two. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about why his impact metrics, his plus minus, can often be more egregious than some of his other stats or some of uh, – or, or than you would think, right? Like, he's a bad defender, but he grades out as one of the worst defenders. He's 20 points per game and inefficient, but you wouldn't think that means he's going to be one of the worst offensive impact players. So I just wanted to highlight a couple of the instances where the combination of low feel, laziness, and really just too much leeway from the Knicks uh, led to some some rough some rough goes in game two and it's gonna sound like i'm piling on him game one he wasn't amazing but he also had in my opinion the best passing game of his career he had six assists and three or four other um hockey assists that he generated out of driving kicks that directly created advantages so um that's relevant for this first play here that you'll see so we're gonna start on offense then go to defense so here, yeah, a lot of people online have already clipped this play of Darius Garland, quote unquote, locking it up. But here you see the pick really far away, like like we like for RJ to get downhill. Jared Allen right there, already helping. And I'm going to run it back a little bit. We know that RJ sometimes doesn't pass when he should. And here he's clearly in attack mode. But at the same time, this is a pocket pass open. If he passes this to I heart rolling, then he's going to have Josh Hart on the wing. As an aside, <clears throat> shouldn't be RJ and Josh Hart together. It should be RJ and a shooter together. Um, I don't like playing those guys together at all for this reason, because if I was Donovan Mitchell, I would simply uh, ignore Josh Hart and just crowd, uh, crowd Hartenstein with the ball. But at the same time, if Hart gets the ball and nobody there, then he can drive and play me, and all that would really be there is Karis. So it's not even a bad situation because that's an empty corner and IQ is here. We're not an empty corner, but IQ is there. So if Karis then helps, then IQ would be open. Um, so he doesn't make that pass. Then he resets. You see the Cavs gearing toward him. He resets. And this is another thing about RJ's offense that some people don't realize. It's nine on the shot clock here. He started this with 17 or 18 or 20 left on the shot clock before it got all the way down to nine. He constantly resets. And by resetting to score again in such a slow, methodical manner, you're not really giving your offense time to generate second options. If they stymie this possession, he's going to have to make a decision really quickly. So the reset comes. He gets two screens. Garland, uh, they're not really good screens, but Garland stays with them. Credit Garland. You see the help on both instances, right? Allen's here again. That's why he asked for the rescreen, but Hart doesn't see it. So he decides, I'm going to just put my shoulder in and get into it. Look at Randall here. He's a lefty. This pass should be easy. There's three guys on you. You could try to dump it to iHeart, but that's not easy. But this pass, we've seen RJ make that pass. The problem is once he hits the paint, he hardly passes unless it's a lob. He really hits that weak side pass only when he's looking to pass right outside the paint. He pre-decides a lot of the time. So now he's double teamed. And because he took so long, he only has three seconds left, which makes him panic. And we know he can't hit that shot. Here's another play. This is this is defense. This is in the fourth quarter. We're already down a lot. This play, Obi is also egregious. Mobley gets the high, sets the high screen for Garland. Obi immediately beat, and instead of trying to turn and hightail and get back into the play. He tries to go for the back steal, which does nothing other than take you out of the play even further. But watch RJ. The key to being a good pick and roll defender in the NBA is knowing what you're going to do after you get screened. Nobody gets around every screen. Drew Holiday doesn't get over every screen. So you have two options when you get over a screen. Well, more than two, but really you can 
get back to the ball handler, but that's really hard because Darius Garland is extremely fast and he's going full speed. You can hit Mobley or block Mobley out that way to prevent a dump off pass to Mobley or a rebound from Mobley. Or you could go take somebody else entirely. For example, I don't know, Karis. Let's see what RJ does. He's kind of just lollygagging here. And because of that, let's rewind it. iHeart steps up to help on Garland. IQ steps up to take Allen. Meanwhile, RJ and Obi are taking nobody. IQ tries to get out, but that's too far for anybody. That kind of little play, you wouldn't say RJ even really died on the screen. You wouldn't say he played super bad defense because Garland's going to blow by him. It's going to blow by a lot of guys. But you have to know what you're doing after the screen, and you can't be lazy. You have to give more than one effort, especially when you're defending a point of attack guy who you know can get into the paint. That means you're going to have a responsibility after that. This is the playoffs. Let's look at this play. Watch RJ. His man in this possession is Okoro in the corner. I mean, not Okoro, sorry, Levert. Garland feeling it. This is from the first quarter. All right. Did you see what did you see what just happened? Let's run it back. RJ's zoning off. He's looking at the ball for the rebound. He has no idea where Karras is. And he's not boxing anybody out. And he's not even leaving the ground. Mitch is with Allen. These two Knicks, Hart and Randall, are with two calves. Where is RJ? What is RJ doing? Who is RJ looking at? What is he doing? He didn't get the rebound. What is he doing? There's five seconds left. Nobody's there. IQ tries to save that. Now he realizes his mistake. This is the playoffs. This is the playoffs. You can't be lazy. You have to lock in. Some people may say that's just lack of awareness or lack of knowing what to do. To me, that's laziness. He's known what to do in Tibbs. He's been in Tibbs defenses for years now. There's no real excuse for this. And this is the type of stuff on both ends that, you know, this isn't a missed three. This isn't a bricked layup. This isn't him getting crossed over or dunked on, right? These are little things that just add up in the playoffs. And it's a killer, especially when he gets 30 minutes a game. So, you know, he really needs to lock in. He's obviously not the only one who we can say that about, right? IQ, Grimes, Randall, Mitch, all of these guys are at fault. But to me, when I watch RJ, he's the only one who gets 30 minutes to make these mistakes without real consequence, which is why I tend to zero in on him.